Hey how you doing? Hope you all are doing great. As you seen in the thumbnail, in this video, we are gonna see, what if Naruto x Kurenai x Anko. This is part 1, and before getting into video, I request you to check the author of this fanfic, and show some love and support. Name of the story is, Naruto's New Life by, Draco122, do check it out. All details in description. And if you want next part of this series, Please leave a like share, and consider subscribe. Let's get into the video. It was six months after the war had ended. A lot of good people had died. Naruto had seen a lot of stuff during the war. He had lost a lot of people that were important to him. Neji was a very hard blow. However the hardest lost was Hinata. Hinata had confessed that she loved Naruto during the attack on the Leaf Village. Naruto with any spare time he had thought about her confession, he knew after a short time that he could fall for her. She was everything he was looking for in a wife. She was beautiful, smart and had a great heart. She would defend her friends with all that she had. It was during the final battle that he knew without a doubt that he loved Hinata. During a break in the battle he made a plan. After the battle he was going to tell her that he had fallen for her and beg her to give him a chance. He was ready to get down on his hands and knees if he needed to do that. He knew he should since he made her wait for so long. However he never got the chance. It was not due to Hinata dying in battle. That would have been difficult but Naruto would have managed it. No it was far worse what happened. Hinata was always so sweet and kind however something happened during the battle. No one knows what it was but she changed. No one really wanted to figure it out. Some were too scared of the new her. The rest of her clan on the other hand were happy that she became the perfect heiress so they never cared to figure it out. Flashback the battle was over. The death toll was high for all villages. At least 50 people from each of the five major villages were killed. Many minor villages also lost troops but not enough to really do anything. Waterfall and Star were the two minor hidden villages that were hit the softest. They would recover the quickest. The Leaf Village had been hit the hardest form all the attacks against it. However no one in the Leaf was worried. Their strongest all survived the battle and they would see to it that the village would survive. Suande thought that the village would not only survive but it would come back stronger than ever. Naruto was helping with getting the bodies ready for transport back to each ninja's village. It was a hard task for all involved. It was one that no one liked doing. This was one of the few times that Naruto did not have a smile on his face either fake or real. He knew in the coming months he would smile again but at this point he could not smile. He spent three days non-stop helping with the bodies. After the three days he was done and all the bodies had been transported to their home villages for burial. Nartuo returned to camp and waiting for him were his friends formed the Rookie 12. Sasuke was back with the group. Since he was never decaled a missing ninja he was cleared of all crimes. That and he helped in the final battle. Without his help Naruto would not have been able to deliver the final blow. Naruto noticed that Sakura was using him as a pillow. A year ago that would have hurt but now it did not. He realized that he no longer loved Sakura in a romantic way. He loved her like a little sister. He was glad to see his sister with the one she loved. He even forgave her for trying to use his feelings against him in the Land of Iron. Naruto goes up to Hinata and he is about to ask her on a date. However she beats him to it but saying more like shouting at him. You are a monster. I wished I had never saved you. I wish I had let you die. You are a demon and you deserve to die. Naruto said calmly. I thank you for your honesty. If anyone needs me I will be sleeping. Good night everyone. End flashback Naruto did not hear the conversation that happened after he left. However he learned from Sakura that Hinata was nearly killed by Tusande. However Sakura stopped her master by stating that killing Hinata would only hurt Naruto more. Since that day no one would speak to Hinata unless it was needed it. Today was the first day Naruto had smiled since the war ended. This day he was smiling for real. Sakura and Sasuke were getting married and Naruto was the best man. The ceremony was beautiful and Naruto was very happy for his friends. He actual cried when Sasuke and Sakura kissed for the first time as husband and wife. As the best man he was asked to give a speech at the reception. 
So he gave this speech it was not rehearsed beforehand it came straight from his heart. He said, I have known you two a very long time. Yes I knew soccer longer but we have been though a lot together the three of us. I have seen that you two belong with each other. He took a pause before saying, now Sasuke you are like a brother to me but Sakura is like a sister to me. So if you hurt my sister I will hurt you a thousand times worse. He took another pause before saying. Now Sakura you are like my sister and I love you but Sasuke is like my brother. So if you hurt him I will hurt you a thousand times worse. Once more the blonde had to take a pause. He said. Now I am trying to say take care of each other and love each other each and every day. Love is the greatest force on this earth and nothing can beat it. I wish you two the best of luck. Naruto then sat down he spent some time with his other friends before he left. He was promoted to the rank of Junin after the final battle. He finally got the respect he deserved. As a result of his promotion he had a mission in the morning. Sakura stopped him before he left she said. Naruto I am glad to see you smiling again you need to do it more. Naruto said. Before today I had no reason to smile. I doubt I will anytime soon. Sakura said. Naruto I know you are still hurting with what that bitch did to you. I am not going to try and get you to get over it. I know that I will fail. All I ask is look for another woman. There are a lot of women that fit what you want in a wife. She took a pause and said. I know what your real dream is. You can't give up on that. Naruto said. I want to thank you. He took a pause before saying. All of you. The others had all come out of the shadows. Naruto said. I know you are right Sakura but I am not sure I will find love. Maybe I can adopt a child if the void in my heart becomes too great. Good night everyone. Naruto with a flash of light was gone. All his friends vowed to help him find a wife. Little did the others know but one other also made that vow. This one was a powerful being that caused many problems for Naruto. However he was going to make it all up to Naruto. This being had a mission and to complete it he had to go and speak with Kami. He left to do just that. Kurama was the nine-tailed fox. He was the most powerful demon lord there was. With a simple shake of one of his tails he could level mountains and cause tidal waves that could wipe out nations. Yet he was not a mindless killing machine. He enjoyed destruction and mayhem as much as the next guy but he did not simple do it just to do it. There had to be a reason behind it. The attacks on the leaf were due to being forced against his will. He had lived a very long time. He had lived for hundreds of years. He had seen empires raise and empires fall. He had met many humans. Not many had earned his respect. In fact very few did and do. However one that had earned his respect was Naruto. Kurama thought to himself after the battle was over that if he had a son he would want his son to be like Naruto. He had given Naruto a few gifts after the final battle. He remembered the look of shock on the blonde's face. Flashback. Kurama was in his fox form but he was smaller. He was speaking with Naruto. Kami had ordered that all the demons be sent to hell. The demons did not mind for to them it was home. The other demon lords were saying goodbye to their host the ones that were still alive anyway. Naruto was speaking with Kurama. Naruto said. You know you crazy fox this is going to sound insane and believe me I know insane. I think I am going to miss you. Kurama smiled and not his insane creepy smile. The one that said I am going to eat you. No this was his true happy smile. He said. I agree kit. I shall miss you as well. However I will not be far. I will leave you with some gifts. Kurama wrapped his tails around Naruto and transferred some of his charka to the blonde. After a short time Kurama released Naruto and said. I have given you more of my power. You will gain tails the more of my power you master up to nine tails. You will be able to transform and have a greater control over the elements. You are also immortal. Naruto was shocked but also happy. He bowed before the fox lord and said. Thank you for your kindness. Kurama said. No problem and please don't bow to me. You are my friend and as such should not bow to me. That in you bowing is not right. Anyway you can also turn any mates you have. I also wish you to use this. In puff of smoke a scroll appeared in front of Naruto. 
He opened it and saw that it was a summoning contract for the foxes. Karama said, Never have I found anyone worthy of such an honor. I want you to be the first and you shall pick who will use us or not. The foxes have many uses including tracking, battle and pranks. Also call for a chat. Naruto signed his name. He was allowed to have more than one contract so he signed with the foxes. He then hugged the fox and the Kurama hugged back. Kurama said, I am the boss of the foxes so call me sometime just to chat. I want an invite to your wedding. Kurama then turned around and headed home. End flashback Kurama gave Naruto those gifts to make up for all the stuff Naruto had to go through because of him. The other reason was Kurama had seen many humans and very few had hearts as pure as Naruto. Allowing Naruto to die would be a great disservice to the world. Kurama had stayed around for a few days to make sure Naruto was able to talk to Hinata. He had heard every word the girl said. It made him mad. Actual it was the first time he felt true rage in many years. Being controlled did not count. He wanted to kill the white-eyed one but he held off. He had bigger fish to fry. Kurama knew that there were other mates out there for his former host. He just had to find her and get Kami to agree. It was about two weeks before the wedding that he found the perfect mate. She was everything Naruto was looking for and Naruto was everything she was looking for. Plus both were attracted to each other. It would take a little bit of time but given the right nudge then they would fall in love. Kurama now had to get Kami to agree. He knew that Kami was the reason behind Hinata's actions. If Kami did not agree then the one Kurama had in mind would end up dead and that would hurt Naruto even more. So Kurama made it to Kami and spoke with her. She was about 5 feet tall with long white hair and black eyes. She said, I know why you are here give me a reason to allow it. Kurama said, He saved the world and you form darkness. Madara would not have stopped until he was in charge and you were destroyed. You took away from him everyone that has ever loved him. His parents, Haku, and now Hanada. Kami sighed and said, You are right but what can I do she may not work. Kurama said, I think she will work you just need to set up the meeting, fix her problems and let me turn her daughter immortal when the time is right and let the rest go from there. I know this will work. I know Naruto better than anyone else. Kami said. Very well I agree. I am tried of my champion being screwed and I hated doing that but Hinata was not right for him as his immortal mate. I hope we are right that this one is right for him. Kurama said. She is right for him I can feel it. I know it to be true. However you can't force her to love him it will only cause more problems. So with a bow the demon fox lord left to return home and start his plan. It would not be easy but when it worked Naruto would be happy finally. Kurama thought when it worked and not if it would work since he was sure it would work. It had been a month since the wedding. Naruto was on a long mission. It took him a week longer than he expected to take. It did not bug him since he had no one to go home to. He had no one to greet him. He had no one to worry if he would come back home alive. Sure he had friends but they had their own lives to worry about. He also had his grandmother but she had to worry about the village. He got back to the village and spoke with Tsunade. Tsunade said, I am glad to see you back Naruto. I got worried. Naruto smiled Suande had become the mother or grandmother for him. He cared about her and she was the only reason he kept going right now. It was at the point that Suande did not even care if Naruto called her grandma anymore. She was actual glad now when he called her that. She said, Naruto you will not like this but you have been working too much, so unless it is needed I am not going to send you on any missions. You may still train but I can't let you go on any more missions. You will be off duty for six months. Suande expected him to yell about that. In all honesty she hoped that he would. If he did then he would be more normal in her eyes. Naruto sighed and said, It is okay grandma. Thank you for looking out for me. I am glad someone is looking out for me. If you need me you know how to find me. Naruto left he went to get some ramen and once he was done he started to walk around for a while. He walked around the village and got near the forest. He sat down and summoned a small black fox. She was named Midnight and she was the personal summons of Naruto. She was like his sister. She jumps up on his shoulders and says, 
So how are you bro? Naruto sighs. What is the point anymore? I don't want to be a weapon but right now that is all I feel like. Midnight cuddled up with her brother and said. Don't turn into one. That will not end well for you. Don't give up. I say wait till the end of the year. If you have not found someone to date then adopt a child. There are a lot of children that need homes due to the war. Naruto softly smiled at this and said. Thanks sis you were right. Just as he was about to go home and get some sleep he and Midnight hear a scream for help. The two run to the location and see a little girl running form five men. The girl is about four years old. She has long black hair and light colored red eyes. Her name is Rose and she is the daughter of Asuma and Kurenai. Asuma died in the war so Rose never met her birth father. However everyone in the village including Naruto told her about her birth father. No one was going to allow her to not know. Naruto watched her a few times when Kurenai was on a mission and no one else could. The two liked each other and got along well. So when Naruto sees the five men chasing her, his blood starts to boil. Using the blunt part of his sword he knocks them out. The sword he has is the one his mother used in battle and the one that earned her the nickname of the Red Death. He hoped to someday surpass her and since he was immortal that was going to happen. Rose clings to Naruto and does not let him go. Naruto had summoned a few more foxes. One comes back a few minutes later with Anko and seeing what almost happened drags the five away along with some shadow clones of Naruto. Naruto gently picks up Rose and Midnight shouts. I found Karenai she is safe. She was not raped she is okay she may have a headache but she is okay. Naruto creates a shadow clone without using seals. It is a good thing since he can't use his hands. He tried twice and each time Rose clung to him tighter. The clone gently pick up Karenai. A small blue fox her name was Ice came up to him. Naruto asked her to get Suande. The group makes it back to Naruto's home. This home was his parents and he took it over after the war. Hanada made every move she could to stop it from being given to Naruto. He gets inside and has the clone place Karenai on the couch. He is still holding on to Rose. He asks her. Do you want anything? Rose shakes her head no she is very scared right now and does not want Naruto to leave. So Naruto sits down in a chair. The little girl falls asleep in his arms holding on to him very tightly. Suande gets to his home or her home since Naruto allowed her to move in. The house had many rooms. Suande had her own wing. She sees Karenai and does a check up on her. After a few short minutes she says. She is okay just a small bruise. She was not raped. I think they were going to do it later. Now it is time to check on the girl. Naruto said. That is great news. Can you check her form this spot? Whenever I try to move she starts to shake violently and clings to me tighter. Suande smiled she noticed how Naruto was gently holding Rose and stroking the young girl's hair and whispering comforting words to her. She said. Of course I can and I think you need to adopt soon if you are not going to get married. You will make a great father. Naruto blushed and said. Thank you now can you look over Rose please. So Suande did and said. She is okay no scratches on her. I would recommend to Karenai that she sees a mind healer like Ino but other than that she will be fine. Naruto said. Okay well since I can't move I am going to get some sleep good night grandma. Suande smiled and got into a chair and fell asleep as well. Midnight gave out a soft howl and thirty other foxes appeared in a large poof of smoke. Midnight said. Okay everyone please portal the home and do not let anyone near it unless it is the approved people. Wake Naruto if there is trouble and get the other three out. The foxes all nodded and went out to do just that. All the foxes knew what happened to Rose. To them harming a child was unforgivable. All of them wanted to rip to pieces the ones that tried to harm the girl. Midnight stood guard over her brother. She did not call him master since Naruto did not like it. He felt it was wrong and after some time she called him brother. She was told the plan by Kurama and she agreed that Karenai would be a great mate for her brother. Plus Rose would be a great leader as well. She only hoped that a relationship did work or else her brother would be in worse shape. Kurenai Yuhi was the Leaf Village's greatest master of Genjutsu. She had taken part in the final battle. 
She was told she did not have to fight since she had a daughter but she wanted to fight. She knew she could die but she had to take the chance. She had to fight to protect her daughter. Rose was Karanai's pride and joy. The mother and daughter pair were enjoying a day out just having fun when they were attacked. Karanai saw the five men coming and was able to warn Rose. Rose started to run. The men hit Kuranai with something because she passed out and all she heard before blackness overcame her was Rose screaming for help. Kuranai woke up and she felt sore very sore. It was then that she looked around and did not know where she was. She started to panic since she felt she had been kidnapped and any time now the kidnappers were going to rape her. She gets up but feels a hand push her down gently. She hears a voice say. Kuranai you need to rest. Your daughter is okay just look over there. So she does and sees her daughter sleeping on someone that looks like Naruto. She then noticed that Tsunade is the one that was talking to her. Kuranai asked these questions one after the other without a break. What happened to me? What happened to Rose? Where are we? Who is she holding on to? Why is she holding on to him with a death grip? Tsunade smiled and is amazed at the speed with which the questions were asked. The leaf leader enjoyed working with Kuriani since she was one of the level head ninjas in her ranks. Kuriani was always so calm and collected so it amused the leaf leader to see her like that. She said, You are in my home. Actual Naruto's home but since I live here I guess it is my home as well. Kuranai says. Okay what about the other questions? Suande says. Okay Rose is sleeping on Naruto. He is the one that saved you both. He brought you here and asked me to look you and Rose over. You were not raped Naruto was able to prevent that. She took a pause so Kuriani could take in the information. The red-eyed ninja was very happy to hear that nothing had happened to her or Rose. She had to thank Naruto but she did not know how. Suande said after a few minutes. As to why your daughter has a death grip on Naruto every time he tried to put her down she clung to him like her life depended upon it. Naruto did not have the heart to remove her so he sat down and feel asleep. He has been on a mission. Kuriani said. Did they touch Rose? The two heard a voice say. No they came close but they did not actually touch her. Looking up they see a small black fox. Suande is used to the fox but Kuranai is a little freaked out. The fox says. I am Midnight and the personal summons of Naruto. He calls me his sister anyway your daughter is fine. I had a mind healer look at her. She will be scared for a few weeks of stranger but that is normal for this type of attack. Kuranai says. I can't thank you too enough for all that you have done. Midnight says. Nothing needs to be done. Harming children is one crime we cannot stand. By we I mean Naruto and the rest of the foxes. Kuranai said. Okay but I am confused as to something. My daughter would not hug someone like that unless she knew the person. So I am guessing she knows Naruto but how? Suande says. The one that I get to watch Rose when you are on a mission is Naruto. Kuranai trusted Suad's judgment so she asked her leader to find someone to watch her daughter when she was out of the village on a mission. Kuranai asked. I get the feeling that he has been avoiding me. Suande said. The answer is simple he is. He feels that you hate him for what happened to Asuma. Kuranai looked ashamed. She never did hate Nordo not for having the fox not for the death of her lover. When Naruto was younger she used to watch out for him. She always thought he was cute. Now lately she had noticed that he had become very handsome. Midnight said. If you want to thank him let him see Rose and hang out with her. The other thing is let him know you do not hate him. That will help him a lot. Naruto had woken up he had heard everything. So he was really happy when he heard Kuriani say. I don't hate him at all. I never hated him. I wanted to strangle Hinata when she said those words to him. I still want to do it. Naruto said. That makes me very happy to hear that Kuriani. Kuriani gets up and attempts to take her daughter back. After a few minutes she was able to pry her daughter off. She then gets ready to leave. Naruto says. I am sending a few foxes to watch over her just in case there were others. Kuriani said. Thank you Naruto. I wish for you to come over tomorrow night and let me cook a meal for you. She took a pause and said. I am sorry that I led you to think that I hate you. 
I don't hate you. If you wish to see my daughter just ask. You are always welcome. Naruto smiled and said. Thank you I will be honored to come tomorrow night. May I bring something? Kuriani asked. Nothing at all just come and be ready to have a nice time. Kuriani left with her daughter and a small force of foxes that were hidden in the shadows. Suande could not resist saying. So you got a date tomorrow night? Naruto said. It is not a date she is just being nice and thanking me for saving her daughter. Suande said. Yes I know but I can still tease you. Besides it would be nice if it was date I know you would not mind that. Naruto said. Any guy in this village besides the married one and the ones that are gay would like to date Koreani. Saunde said. True well good night my grandson. She hugged him and gave him a kiss on the cheek. Naruto would not admit it but he would not mind if it was in fact a date and not just a thank you. For yes he did find Koreani to be a very beautiful woman. She was one of the most beautiful women in the village but he knew nothing about her. Midnight sensing her brother's thoughts said. Now is your chance to get to know her. She could be a great friend or she could be more. Naruto said. You are right sis. I will do just that and see what happens. Kuranai had gotten home and she was too tried to bring her daughter to her bed. So she sat on the couch and put her daughter's head on her lap. She was about to fall asleep when she saw a small yellow fox cuddle up to Rose and a small light blue fox cover them with a blanket. The small light blue fox said. If you need anything please let us know. Kuranai said. How come that fox is cuddling with my daughter and what is her name? The light blue one said. I am called Ice and she is called Lighting. She is cuddle with your daughter because she feels a bond. It is like Kiba's clan and the dogs. If you allow her then your daughter will have a friend for life no matter what she does. Ice took a pause and said. Before you ask no Naruto has not been teaching Rose the ways of the ninja. He knows you do not want her to be one. So he has not taught her a thing. Lighting was playing with her one day and they too have a bond it seems. We were not sure how you would feel about it so Lighting has stayed away. Kuriani said. I will talk with Naruto tomorrow night and we can discuss it then. Ice said. Okay good night. Kuriani went to sleep and did not wake up till her daughter woke her up. Rose had gotten up that morning and she knew she was not in the same spot she fell asleep on last night. She noticed her friend Lighting was right next to her and she notices that she is near her mom. She tackled her mom in a huge hug and starts to cry. That is what wakes up Kuriani hearing her daughter cry. She pulls her close to her and says, It is okay no one will harm you. We were saved thanks to Naruto and the foxes. I have good news he is coming tonight for dinner. Rose stopped crying and said. That is good I like him he is a great person. He is so much fun to be with. Kuriani said. So he has been watching you. How come you never told me? Rose said. You never asked. He told me to tell you that he was watching me. I have been lying to him and have been telling him that it is okay for him to watch me. Kuriani said. It is not okay to lie young lady. Rose said. I know mommy but I did not want him to stop watching me. He takes care of me and helps me see that I can do anything I want. Plus he needs me. Kuriani said. What do you mean by that? Rose said. He is so very sad I can feel it. When he is playing with me he is happy I can feel it. Why is he so sad mom? Kuriani was unsure how to answer that. She of course knew the answer but how to explain it to a four year old. Lighting jumped up and said. The one he loved broke his heart in a terrible way. She called him a monster. That and combined with the fact that he was always treated badly by the people in this village makes it hard for him. Lighting took a pause and said. Rose you are right you have been helping Naruto. You have helped him more than anyone else in this village has besides his grandmother. Kuriani said. Well form this day forward I will be his friend and will help him. I want to help him. Sad and depression do not work well with Naruto. I miss the days he used to play pranks. So Kuriani told her daughter and her fox guardians the stories of Naruto's pranks until she had to start making dinner. It caused laughter to fill the room. Naruto had gotten up that morning he could not sleep. He usual could not sleep since her had nightmares. Most of them involved Hinata and the words she said. 
A few had he on to hurting the people precious to him. Yes, he had those nightmares last night, but he kept thinking, which is what kept him awake. Holding Rose last night awoke a feeling inside his heart. He knew what it was and he knew what he had to do. Naruto spent a lot of time at the orphanage playing with the children. One of the first people to apologize to him was the matron of the orphanage she had badly mistreated Naruto. She only did it since she was forced to. The civilian council told her that if she did not mistreat Naruto then they would cut her funding. They also did the same thing when she kicked him out at the age of four. She had not been in good shape ever since. The guilt was eating her up. Naruto forgave her since she was only looking after the best interest of all the children. She cried when Naruto forgave her. Naruto went often to the orphanage. There was one little girl that no one wanted to adopt and it worried Naruto. She spent a lot of time with him. She had long black hair and bright blue eyes. She was the same age as Rose and like Rose she liked Naruto and enjoyed when he came to visit. Her name was Amber. Naruto knew when he got up that morning that he had to adopt her. He did not know what but he had to do it. So he went downstairs to see his grandmother. She could tell right away that something was troubling him. Naruto said. The little girl I have been telling you about at the orphanage I am going to adopt her. Last time I left she had a look in her eyes of despair and sadness. I need to do it. Will you support me on this? Tsunade was shocked but said. Naruto I have heard a lot of crazy things in my life but this is the craziest. However I will support you. Let us go and get your daughter. Naruto said. I figured I was going to have to argue or beg for your help. Tsunade smiled and said. I am not above that but in this case I think it is a great idea. So the two left to go to the orphanage when they got there the two were greeted by the matron. She smiled at them and said. What can I do for you too? Naruto asked. Has anyone adopted Amber yet? The matron said sadly. I am afraid no one has yet. Naruto said. I would like to adopt her if that is okay. The matron smiled a bright smile before saying. Of course let us go see if she wants to be adopted by you. Naruto walked into the room and a little girl sees him and makes a beeline for him. She hugs him and says. I am glad you are back. I missed you. Naruto picks her gently and says. Amber do you want a home? Do you want to have a father? If so do you want to live with me and become my daughter? Amber started to cry but these were tears of joy. She hugged him tighter and said. Yes I do daddy. So after all the paperwork was done with Naruto took his new daughter out. He was going to take her shopping but first she needed to get some food. Amber only had a few items. Suande had gone back to work. Shizune was sent to help Naruto do clothing shopping. Naruto said after they had picked out enough outfits for Amber to have a wardrobe. Thanks for your help. I am at a loss as to what to do with clothing. Shizune said. Don't worry my friend. I was glad to help. Now go get ready for your date. Naruto blushed and said. It is not a date. Shizun said. I know now go and get ready. Naruto took Amber to a toy store. She was encouraged to pick out a few toys. She really liked the stuffed nine-tailed fox. Naruto thought it was very funny so he got it for her. The two then headed home to get ready. He said. Tonight we are having dinner at a friend's house. She is thanking me for helping her daughter. Her daughter is your age I think you two could be friends. Amber asked. Will I be allowed there daddy? Midnight said. Yep you sure are allowed there. Karani's words were. Why would he ask such a stupid question of course she is welcomed here. Amber was not at all freaked out by the talking foxes. She was used to them. Like Rose she also had a fox partner. Hers was red and named Ruby. Ruby was sitting on her shoulders. Nartuo LVED it when Amber called him daddy. He could not explain why but he loved it. After getting home and getting dressed for dinner the father-daughter pair made their way to Karani's home for dinner. Amber climbed on her daddy's shoulders. Up above Karama was laughing his butt off. The little girl got a toy plushie of him. He should be offended by the toy plushie but he was not. He thought it was cool. Whoever made them really got his likeness. Naruto adopting Amber was not a part of his original plan but he thought it was good. Kami said form behind him. I thought it would work. 
She lost her parents in the war. Naruto can help her and she can help him. Plus she will be a great person. When the time comes I want you to turn her as well, Kurama said. Unexpected but I like it. I am shocked that you would allow this. Kami said. I know I have not acted like it but I do actual like Naruto. I respect him. He has a great heart. I was at first furious when you made him immortal. However I agree with you. The world would be a bad place if he died. She took a pause before saying. Now let us watch the dinner. Shizun was speaking to her master and mentor and she asked the question that was burning on her mind. You see as the Hoka guy Suande had to approve any adoptions that were done with any of her ninjas. So she wondered why Suande allowed it. She asked her master that point blank. Thankfully the relationship they had allowed that. Suande answered with a question of her own. How was he today when you helped him? Was he the same as he has been the last six months or was he different? Shizun thought about it and said. He was a little like the Naruto we used to know. Not all the way but a little bit. Suande said. That is why I allowed it. If all goes well then we will have the old Naruto back. If we have the old one back then maybe he can find a wife and fulfill his real dream. Naruto and Amber were on their way to dinner with Kuriani and Rose. Naruto was starting to feel like himself once more. He knew he was not 100% but he was getting there and that was enough for him. After a few minutes the pair gets to Kurani's home. She lets them in and Amber is a little shy. She hides behind her dad's leg and holds on to it tightly. Rose goes up to Amber and sticks out her hand. The two shake hands. Amber sees that Rose has a fox on her shoulder as well so she goes and starts to play with her. Amber knows that foxes only go to people that are good. So she knows she is safe. Kuriani and Naruto start to talk and chat about stuff. Kuriani really likes chatting with Naruto. He is fun to talk with. Plus he listens to her and that is something that very few do with her. Anko her best friend listens but most of the time she is drunk. Naruto listens and hangs on every word. Kuriani was thinking that she may have to seek out Naruto if she needs to talk to someone from now on. Nordo listened but not only that he did not judge nor did he give advice he just listened. After about an hour Karnai said. Naruto about lighting will she harm Rose? Naruto said. No not at all. She would die before that happens. She will protect Rose with her life. He took a pause before saying. Think of lighting as an older sister always watching over Rose. No matter what lighting will not fail. She is beating herself up. Karnai asked. Why is that? Naruto said. Simple she feels that she should have done more. She feels that it's her fault that you two were hurt. Karnai said. Okay what needs to be done for the this bond to form? Naruto smiled and said. It already has. Will you allow lighting to stay with Rose? Karnai said. You don't you need her? Naruto smiled and said. She is a great friend but she would do well with Rose. I promised Asuma on his grave that I would watch out for Rose. Lighting is helping with that. Naruto called the little fox over and she jumped on his shoulder and said. What do you need brother? Naruto said. I have good news lighting Karnai has accepted that you are Rose's guardian. So form this day forward until I say otherwise you are to be with her. Lighting is happy she licks Karnai's check and says. Thank you I will protect your daughter with my life. Karnai started to pet the fox which earned a happy purr from the fox. Lighting rejoined the girls playing. Naruto was smiling seeing his daughter happy. Karnai said. So what made you decide to adopt? If you don't mind telling me that is. Naruto said. Well to be honest I have been debating on if I should do it or not. I have not felt like I should take care of a child so that is why I have been holding off. I have not felt emotional stable enough to do that. Naruto took a pause before he said. Last night as Rose was holding on to me I felt something in my heart. I felt the love of a child the unconditional love of a child towards their parent. I know I am not her parent but it remained me of my true dream. He took a pause before saying. Only my grandmother knows my true dream. Actual the foxes know so I should restate that. My grandmother is the only human that knows my true dream. My true dream was to get married and have family of my own. 
I wanted lots of children. Karenai said. You figured adopting Amber would help her have a home and help fill the void in your heart. It was not a question more of a statement. That did not stop Naruto from saying. Yes I had hoped to start a family with Hinata but we all know how that worked. Karenai pulled him into a hug and said. I don't know what you are going through but I will be here to help you. If you need someone to talk to I will listen. Naruto smiled and hugged her back before saying. Thank you so much. After that dinner was served and everyone had a great time eating. Naruto really liked Kurani's cooking she was a master cook. Afterwards the girls were getting sleepy. The girls wanted bedtime story. Naruto said. Okay I have one. Listen up this about a princess. So Naruto told a story about a princess that was cursed by an evil witch and she ended up with the help her best friend breaking the curse. Along the way the princess fell in love with her best friend. The two were married have many hardships. The girls fell asleep after the story. Karenai gently took her daughter to her room and placed the young girl on her bed. She gets back in and sees Naruto stroking Amber's hair softly. She thinks to herself. You will make a great father Naruto. I hope you find a wife soon and whoever she is will be lucky as can be. She says. Before you go in two days I am going on a mission that will last one to three weeks maybe more. Do you know anyone that can watch Rose for me? Naruto said. I was told I am being forced to take some vacation for a few months. So she can stay with me. Amber and Rose get along I think it will be great. Karenai said. You don't mind doing it? Naruto said. Not at all it will be my pleasure to watch her. I promise not to teach her anything. Karenai said. About that I have been thinking since last night. It is in her blood plus it is what she really wants. So if she wants it can you teach her? Naruto said. Of course I will teach her. I was planning on teaching Amber. After a brief hug formed the two adults in which both felt sad that the hug did not last longer Naruto picked up Amber and went home. He was about to put her in her bed when she woke up and said. Daddy can you please hold me tonight? I am scared I will wake up and this will be a dream. He gently kissed her forehead and said. Of course my little angel. It was the morning after the dinner with Kurinai and Tsunade right now was not in a good mood. This was no surprise for her or for anyone that knew her. She was not often in a good mood in the morning. However what did shock her and the people that knew her was the reason behind her bad mood. Usual she was mad that she had too much paperwork to do. Naruto taught her the secret of how to beat paperwork. She really loved shadow clones by the way. Usual she was in a bad mood since she old not drink in the morning. After the battle she stopped drinking so that was out. Usual she got mad at Naruto but he had been quite lately and that worried her more but she knew he may be back to his old self soon so that was out. Now the reason for her bad mood was not Naruto nor was it Kurinai no it was Hanada. Hanada had gotten wind that Naruto had adopted and she did not like it at all. She made it to Tsunade's office and demanded to speak with her. As a clan leader she had the right to do it. Hanada was not alone she had her allies on the council. By allies I mean minions. Puppets people that still hated Naruto no matter what. Suande said. Lady Hanada and various non-important council members to what do I owe this interruption? Before they could speak Suande said. Actual I know the reason. You only come in with your puppets when you want to ruin Naruto's life even more. So I am assuming you heard about the adoption. I can't wait to hear your excuse as to why he should not have been allowed to adopt. Before Hinata says anything Suande shouts. Shizun looks like you won the bet she came today. I lost again. A random councilwoman asked. The author says random since she is not important. What bet? Suande said. I bet Shizun 100 that you lot would come in two days. Shizun bet today. So lost I got rid of my alcohol problem but not my gambling problem. Oh well. One vice at a time. Hanada was not accepting this. She was expecting to be ignored or told no she was not expecting to be laughed at and treated like a joke. This enraged her. She said. Now listen I demand respect. Suande said very calmly but everyone knew she was not. I am not a part of your little clan. I do not need to respect you. It must be earned not given. 
Now say your excuse so I may get back to work. Hanada said. He is a demon and he will hurt the child. I am going to us all my political power to get the adoption reversed. Suande said. Well it is a good thing I already saw this coming. She tossed Hanada a scroll and said. By the way there are many copies of this one. The scroll said that every Kagai of all the major villages along with many federal lords all supported the adoption. In other words if Hanada tried anything her clan was sunk. Suande said. Now that this over please leave unless you have another stupid excuse. Hanada said. I will just have to use other ways. Suande said. Hanada whatever you are planning I would suggest you stop. If you try and harm his child Naruto will hurt you a thousand times worse. Hanada smirked and said. My clan will protect me he would not dare attack me. Suande said. He is like his mother. His mother if you harmed her important people not even Kami herself could stop his mother. I am giving you this warning. Council members remember one think I am in charge you are here to advise not order around. Now get out of my office. Up above Kami was smiling for Suande was right about Naruto's mother. Even Kami was scared of Naruto's mother. Hanada left vowing to kill Naruto and his child. She would have to wait. She wanted Naruto to lower his guard. She knew it would not be easy but she would do it. The branch family used to love her and hoped she would be clan leader. However now they feared her and wanted her gone. The members of the branch family respect Naruto. They had hoped that he would marry Hianta and the two would get rid of the cage bird seal. All that hope was dashed. A branch family member was out on a mission. She had completed it but she had one more thing to do. She made it to Naruto's home. He was awake but his daughter was asleep. She gets him to open the door and she says. I must be quick. Hanada has discovered that you adopted a child. She plans on killing your child. I do not know when. Naruto asked. Why are you telling me this? If she finds out she will kill you and anyone else she feels like. The woman said. I know but it is what we as the branch family want to do. Every one of us hoped and prayed that you and Hanada would marry. We hoped and prayed that the seal would be removed from us forever. Now it is a dead dream. That was why Neji died with a smile on his face. He felt that the rest of us would be free. Naruto said. It will still happen. I promised and I never go back on my word. I will find a way so that Neji would not have died in vain. The woman said. I know and I hope to live to see that day. With that the woman is gone. Naruto says. Midnight do we have any seal masters in the clan? Midnight said. Yes we do but removing the seals will only cause war. Naruto said. Good point okay then please send some foxes to watch out for that person. Stop Hanada from killing her if you can and anyone else. Also keep tabs on Hanada. Midnight said. I will not allow her to harm Amber. Naruto said. I know but I don't trust her. I am scared of what she might do. Naruto went to get his daughter up and ready for the day. They had a busy day today. Amber gets up and at first she was confused and a little scared. She then sees her daddy and jumps at him and starts to cry. She says. I thought it was a dream. Naruto pulls her tighter to his chest and says. It is not a dream my little angel. You are here to stay and nothing and I mean nothing will make me send you back. Amber asked with a lot of fear in her voice. More fear than a child her age should have in their voice Naruto noted. What if you find a woman you love and she wants me gone? Naruto said. Then I will tell her that she can leave. You are way too important to me. I love you and I will not let anyone take you for me. Amber said. Thank you daddy I love you too. What are we doing today? Naruto said. We have to get you a checkup. Hopefully with one of the three I trust. There are also a lot of people that wish to meet you. Including the ones I see as family. Also tomorrow Rose is going to stay with us for a few weeks. I hope that is okay. Amber smiled at that she said. I like her she is a great friend. She is my first human friend. She started to pet Ruby. Nartuo said. Well you are going to make more friends. So the pair had breakfast that Naruto made. It was not ramen if you can believe it. Naruto knew how to cook. He knew since he was a child. 
The only reason he ate ramen so much was that was all he could afford when he was a kid. After the war he ate better since stores actual sold him stuff and stuff that was not outdated. Naruto said. Time to go and get you a checkup. Amber was a little nervous she did not like doctors. The doctor that came to the orphanage was not a nice person but he was the only one that would come. Naruto said. Don't worry I asked that one of three people give you a checkup and all three I trust 100%, they will not hurt you. The two make it to the hospital. Midnight is on Naruto's shoulder. The nurse at the front desk no longer said anything about the fox. She always respected Naruto and never treated him badly. She was one of the few at the hospital that was allowed to treat Naruto. That was one reason she did not say anything. The other was Suande would kill her that she had not doubt. The nurse said so have you gotten hurt again Naruto? Naruto said. No I need a checkup for my daughter. The nurse said. Okay you know where to wait and what do you mean daughter? The nurse looks down and sees the small child holding on to Naruto. The nurse smiles and says. Sorry we were told you had adopted but no one believed it. Sakura is waiting in her office. She will give the checkup she said. She beat up the others that wanted to do it. Naruto laughed since he knew the nurse meant that Sakura beat up the others. Naruto gently picked up his daughter and held her close. He carried her up to Sakura's office. When they get there the pink-haired one is waiting for them. She says. So you get back from your mission. Save Kuriani and her daughter. Adopt a child and have dinner with Kuriani and you don't tell me. I am hurt. Naruto then explained what happened. Sakura said wow that sounds so like you. Anyway you want your daughter to have a checkup well let us get to it. Sakura looks at Amber and smiles. She says. Hello little one my name is Sakura and I am a friend of your father. Actual we are teammates. Anyway I am going to check to make sure that you are healthy as can be. So Sakura started to do a scan on Amber. Sakura checked everything and checked it twice. Sakura said. Well Naruto and Amber. I have great news. Amber you are 100% healthy. You are where you should be at your age. Just make sure she has a proper diet and all the usual stuff. Amber hugged Sakura and said. Thank you auntie. Amber ran to the bathroom and while there Naruto said. So what is the bad news and before you deny it I know you by now. Sakura sighed and said with a lot of nervousness. Physical she is fine but there is something up with her mind. I am not sure what it is. I suggest Ina look at her. There are signs that she was abused they are small but they are there. She was nervous at what Naruto's actions would be. Before the war he would have haunted down her parents and try to find answers. Now he said. Okay thanks for being honest with me. If her parents are alive I shall make sure they do not come near her. If they are not alive then I will help Amber recover that is all I can do. Amber came back and started to play with the toys in the waiting room. Sakura said. So how did you date go? Naruto said. It was not a date why do you three keep on saying that? Sakura said. Okay so it was not a date but I bet you wish it was. Naruto said. Nearly every guy in this village would wish it. I got to spend time with her and I liked it a lot. I got the change to get to know her and I know I am falling for her but I am scared. Naruto took a pause and said. She is everything I am looking for. Smart, funny, has a great heart and will do anything for her important people. Naruto took another pause before saying. You and I both know it will not happen even if I wanted it. She will not see me that way. Even if we do date what could prevent her from hurting me like Hinata did. Sakura was shocked by this. Not by what he said but by how fast he said it. She figured she would have to draw it out of him. Naruto said. I figured that was your plan so I might as well just say it quickly. Now if you excuse me we need to go see Ino. Naruto and Amber left the hospital and went to see Ino. Ino was shocked when she sees the little girl with Naruto. She asked. So who is this Naruto? Naruto smiled and said. This is my daughter Amber. Ino did a double take and said. Wow congrats so what can I do for you? Naruto explained what he wanted done. Ino using her clan's techniques went into Amber's mind. She came back 10 minutes later and she was mad. Naruto had never seen her that mad before. 
She then did some hand signs and touched her hands to Naruto's head and said, Memory sharing. Naruto then saw all that Ino saw and it made his blood boil. The good news is he had the faces of Amber's birth parents so he could see if they were alive and make sure they stayed away from Amber. Ino said, Naruto I know about Koreani and I am going to say give it a chance if it comes up. Don't let that bitch ruin you. Naruto hugged Ino and thanked her. Amber did the same thing. Ino nearly cried when Amber called her auntie. The duo went to get some lunch and on the way they ran into Uruka who Amber could tell was a nice guy. They ate lunch together. Uruka said. So is it true that you are dating Koreani? Naruto said. Not you two. No I am not dating her and to answer your next question yes I would love to date her but answer my question why would she date me? What do I have to offer one of the, if not the most beautiful woman in the village? She is not only beautiful but she is kind, smart, funny and has a great heart. She is perfect. Aruka said. Besides the vast amounts of money you have the large house and all the power you have. You have a good heart as well. When people go to you with problems you listen and try to help. You will go through the fires of hell for the important ones in your life. Aruka said after a short pause. You also adore her daughter and that is a big plus in your favor. My advice is go for her. Naruto excused himself and went out to meet more people. Suande wanted to meet her great granddaughter. She could not meet her the other day. She signed the paperwork and left to get to work. Little did Naruto know but three other people had heard his conversation. One was Anko, one was Rose and the other was Kuriani. Kuranai had a hard time sleeping. She really enjoyed spending time with Naruto. She knew that he was a very handsome man and one of the most sought after men in the village. Someone once got the idea of setting up a tournament, the winner got to marry Naruto. Suande put that idea down fast. Kuranai laughed at the memory it was very funny. A few women were sent to the hospital. One was still in it. She knew that she always found Naruto to be cute but now he was hot and she was attached to him of that she had not doubt. After last night she knew she was falling for him but she never figured he would go for her. He had all that she was looking for in a partner. He had a big heart and was able to forgive. He had a kind smile that could put anyone at ease. She felt that no one would want her with all the baggage she had. She had a few things she needed to take care of so she got up and ready for the day. Rose got up and was really happy to learn that she would be staying with Naruto or Uncle Naruto as she called him. First Kuranai made a change to her will. She made Naruto the guardian of Rose should she pass away on a mission. She knew it was a rash choice but she knew it was the right one. In her heart it was the right choice. Kuriani could not stop thinking about Naruto. She was really confused about her feelings for the blonde haired ninja. She needed to talk to someone. Saunde was out since Kuriani did not want to admit to her leader that she might be falling for her son or grandson. She was downright terrified of telling her that. Shizun was out since she would tell Saunde. She knew who she should ask but was afraid to ask. The person she knew she should ask saw Naruto like a little brother. She was Anko. Before the war Anko started to date Uruka. Naruto wrote Uruka while on his training trip. In one letter he told his former teacher that he should ask Anko on a date. Uruka did and the couple hit it off very well. Before the war the two were married. Uruka saw Naruto as a little brother. Once Anko learned that it was Naruto that made Uruka ask her on a date she became found of him. Anko started to see the blonde one as a little brother. She became the big sister and she took the role of protective big sister very seriously. So much so that many people that insulted her little brother or had any intention of harming him meet with a lot of pain. One guy found out just how many snakes Anko could summon. Koreani wondered how Anko would act knowing she had a niece now. Koreani de-iced to find Anko later and ask for her advice. She took Rose and spent the day with her. She liked spending a lot of time with Rose before a big mission in case she did not come back. While they were out playing Koreani told Rose. As you know you will be staying with Uncle Naruto. I want you to be good for him. I also gave him permission to teach you the ways of the ninja. Rose was really happy to hear that for it was her dream to be a ninja. Koreani was afraid of losing her daughter which is why she did not want her daughter to become a ninja. 
However she realized last night talking with Naruto that it was in Rose's blood. Both of her birth parents were ninjas so it was natural. They did not have to find Anko for she found them instead. Anko had a look of pure joy on her face. Usual she had that look when she got to torture someone. Anko said. I can't believe it I have a niece. I can't wait to meet her. I also can't believe you had a date with my little brother and did not ask me first. Kuriani at the last comment blushed bright red and said. It was not a date. I was just thanking him for saving me and Rose. Anko said. I know I am just messing with you. However the blush on your face says to me that you are attracted to my little brother. Now as an overprotective big sister I must make sure of your intentions with my little brother. So what are they? Kuriani said. That is what I want to talk to you about. The truth is you are right I am attracted to him. What single women is not? However I got the chance to talk to him last night and to learn more about him. I want to date him but... Anko could tell her friend was nervous. So she said gently, more gentle than anyone would expect from her. What is troubling you? Kuriani answered. I want to date him and see if anything can come from it but why would he want to date me? Plus I am afraid of three people and one is dead. Anko said. Well about me hurt my brother and you will not see the next day. Suande the same thing expect it will hurt more. Who is the other? Kuriani said. His mother you know what she was like. If I piss her off she can hurt me from the grave. Anko said. All good points but here is my advice think about it while on the mission if you can. If you like the idea, then ask him on date. I would say wait for him but even if he does want to date you he will not. Hanada hurt him too much. Anko took a pause before saying. I think he has given up on finding love. The trio then went to get some lunch they ended up being near the same place that Naruto and Uruka and Amber were having lunch so they heard everything that was said by Naruto. Kuriani watched him walk out and once he left she sat down with Anko and Uruka and Rose and started to softly cry. She said in between tears. He called my beautiful. No man has ever said that about me and meant it or wanted something for me. Anko said. So does that answer your question my friend? Kuriani says. Yes it does and I know what I need to do. Come on Rose let us go find Uncle Naruto. The mother and daughter pair left to find the blonde-haired ninja. Uruka said. Do you think they will get together? Anko said. Yes the question I have is will they stay together? I swear if she hurts him I will kill her. Irka knew his wife was serious. Anko said. So tell me about our niece. Irka did long into the afternoon. Naruto and Rose went around the village visiting people that were friends of Naruto. Ino had made sure that everyone knew of Naruto adopting Amber. All of his friends congratulated him and offered to help out if it was needed. Now it was time for Amber to meet Suande. Amber heard of the great Hoka guy and respected her. Both Naruto and Suande were Amber's heroes. So it made the little girl really happy to know they were her family now. She was a little nervous about meeting Suande but her daddy put her mind at ease. Amber was really happy that she had a home now. She was scared to go to sleep last night. She was afraid she would wake up and it would all be a dream a really good dream but a dream nonetheless. She said to her daddy before they got to Suad's office. Thank you, Naruto said. For what? Amber hugged him tightly and said. Thank you for adopting me and making me your daughter and for giving me a home. Naruto hugged her back and said. I am only sorry I did not do it sooner. Naruto took her hand and the two walked to the tower. The two get into the Hoka guy's office, at once Amber bows to Tsunade. Tsunade pulls her granddaughter into a hug and says, Now I will have none of this bowing form my family. Tsunade did the scan one more time she was paranoid when it came to her family. Tsunade said, Amber should you need help and your daddy can't help you I will always be glad to help you little one. After talking for a while Amber hugged her and said, I will see you later grandma. I love you. The two then left and Tsunade cried. She finally had family. She only wished she had not wasted so much time. However she vowed she would be there for her granddaughter. She said. Kashina, you would be proud of your son. I only wish you could see him now and your granddaughter. 
Up above watching with Kurama and Kami was Kashina and she was indeed proud of her son. Kuranai had a hard time sleeping. She really enjoyed spending time with Naruto. She knew that he was a very handsome man and one of the most sought-after men in the village. Someone once got the idea of setting up a tournament, the winner got to marry Naruto. Suande put that idea down fast. Kuranai laughed at the memory it was very funny. A few women were sent to the hospital. One was still in it. She knew that she always found Naruto to be cute but now he was hot and she was attached to him of that she had not doubt. After last night she knew she was falling for him but she never figured he would go for her. He had all that she was looking for in a partner. He had a big heart and was able to forgive. He had a kind smile that could put anyone at ease. She felt that no one would want her with all the baggage she had. She had a few things she needed to take care of so she got up and ready for the day. Rose got up and was really happy to learn that she would be staying with Naruto or Uncle Naruto as she called him. First Kuranai made a change to her will. She made Naruto the guardian of Rose should she pass away on a mission. She knew it was a rash choice but she knew it was the right one. In her heart it was the right choice. Kuriani could not stop thinking about Naruto. She was really confused about her feelings for the blonde-haired ninja. She needed to talk to someone. Saunde was out since Kuriani did not want to admit to her leader that she might be falling for her son or grandson. She was downright terrified of telling her that. Shizun was out since she would tell Saunde. She knew who she should ask but was afraid to ask. The person she knew she should ask saw Naruto like a little brother. She was Anko. Before the war Anko started to date Uruka. Naruto wrote Uruka while on his training trip. In one letter he told his former teacher that he should ask Anko on a date. Uruka did and the couple hit it off very well. Before the war the two were married. Uruka saw Naruto as a little brother. Once Anko learned that it was Naruto that made Uruka ask her on a date she became found of him. Anko started to see the blonde one as a little brother. She became the big sister and she took the role of protective big sister very seriously. So much so that many people that insulted her little brother or had any intention of harming him meet with a lot of pain. One guy found out just how many snakes Anko could summon. Kuriani wondered how Anko would act knowing she had a niece now. Kuriani de-iced to find Anko later and ask for her advice. She took Rose and spent the day with her. She liked spending a lot of time with Rose before a big mission in case she did not come back. While they were out playing Kuriani told Rose. As you know you will be staying with Uncle Naruto. I want you to be good for him. I also gave him permission to teach you the ways of the ninja. Rose was really happy to hear that for it was her dream to be a ninja. Kuriani was afraid of losing her daughter which is why she did not want her daughter to become a ninja. However she realized last night talking with Naruto that it was in Rose's blood. Both of her birth parents were ninjas so it was natural. They did not have to find Anko for she found them instead. Anko had a look of pure joy on her face. Usual she had that look when she got to torture someone. Anko said. I can't believe it I have a niece. I can't wait to meet her. I also can't believe you had a date with my little brother and did not ask me first. Kuriani at the last comment blushed bright red and said. It was not a date. I was just thanking him for saving me and Rose. Anko said. I know I am just messing with you. However the bluss on your face says to me that you are attracted to my little brother. Now as an overprotective big sister I must make sure of your intentions with my little brother. So what are they? Kuriani said. That is what I want to talk to you about. The truth is you are right I am attracted to him. What single women is not? However I got the chance to talk to him last night and to learn more about him. I want to date him but... Anko could tell her friend was nervous. So she said gently, more gentle than anyone would expect from her. What is troubling you? Kuriani answered. I want to date him and see if anything can come from it but why would he want to date me? Plus I am afraid of three people and one is dead. Anko said. Well about me hurt my brother and you will not see the next day. Suande the same thing expect it will hurt more. Who is the other? Kuriani said. His mother you know what she was like. If I piss her off she can hurt me from the grave. Anko said. All good points but here is my advice think about it while on the mission if you can. 
If you like the idea, then ask him on date. I would say wait for him but even if he does want to date you he will not. Hanada hurt him too much. Anko took a pause before saying. I think he has given up on finding love. The trio then went to get some lunch they ended up being near the same place that Naruto and Uruka and Amber were having lunch so they heard everything that was said by Naruto. Kuriani watched him walk out and once he left she sat down with Anko and Uruka and rose and started to softly cry. She said in between tears. He called my beautiful. No man has ever said that about me and meant it or wanted something for me. Anko said. So does that answer your question my friend? Kuriani says. Yes it does and I know what I need to do. Come on Rose let us go find Uncle Naruto. The mother and daughter pair left to find the blonde haired ninja. Uruka said. Do you think they will get together? Anko said. Yes the question I have is will they stay together? I swear if she hurts him I will kill her. Irka knew his wife was serious. Anko said. So tell me about our niece. Irka did long into the afternoon. Naruto and Rose went around the village visiting people that were friends of Naruto. Ino had made sure that everyone knew of Naruto adopting Amber. All of his friends congratulated him and offered to help out if it was needed. Now it was time for Amber to meet Suande. Amber heard of the great Hoka guy and respected her. Both Naruto and Suande were Amber's heroes. So it made the little girl really happy to know they were her family now. She was a little nervous about meeting Suande but her daddy put her mind at ease. Amber was really happy that she had a home now. She was scared to go to sleep last night. She was afraid she would wake up and it would all be a dream a really good dream but a dream nonetheless. She said to her daddy before they got to Suad's office. Thank you, Naruto said. For what? Amber hugged him tightly and said. Thank you for adopting me and making me your daughter and for giving me a home. Naruto hugged her back and said. I am only sorry I did not do it sooner. Naruto took her hand and the two walked to the tower. The two get into the Hoka guy's office. At once Amber bows to Tsunade. Tsunade pulls her granddaughter into a hug and says. Now I will have none of this bowing form my family. Tsunade did the scan one more time she was paranoid when it came to her family. Tsunade said. Amber should you need help and your daddy can't help you I will always be glad to help you little one. After talking for a while Amber hugged her and said. I will see you later grandma. I love you. The two then left and Tsunade cried. She finally had family. She only wished she had not wasted so much time. However she vowed she would be there for her granddaughter. She said. Kashina, you would be proud of your son. I only wish you could see him now and your granddaughter. Up above watching with Kurama and Kami was Kashina and she was indeed proud of her son. Rose and Amber woke up to the smell of food cooking. Both girls got dressed and ready for the day and rushed downstairs to get the food. Naruto watched the two girls carefully. Amber was doing a lot better. She did not have the fear in her eyes that she had yesterday morning. She had accepted that she had a home for life. Rose on the other hand was not looking well. She was barely holding on. Naruto knew that it would not take much for her to break. Naruto hugged her and that made her break down. Amber joined in the hug when her friend started to cry. Naruto whispered softly in her ear. Let it out let it all out. We are here for you. It is okay to cry. No one will be upset with you. Rose did just that. After a good hour she was done crying. She had fallen asleep form crying so much and so hard. Naruto had a guess as to what was making her feel this way. He could not help her unless she admitted it. He was unsure if Rose would admit what was scaring her or how long it would take. There was a knock on the door. Naruto carefully with Rose in his arms got up and answered it. Standing there was Anko. She says. So I want to meet my niece and why did you not introduce me to her yet? Naruto said. To be honest I was not sure she is ready to meet you yet. You can be scary at times sis. Anko said. Cut someone's check and drank their blood one time and you were labeled crazy for life. Anko noticed that did not get a reaction out of Naruto. Not even a small smiled. Anko finally saw the girl up close. Amber said. It is nice to meet you Auntie Anko. Anko was shocked that the girl knew who she was. 
Amber said. Rose told me about you. She said that you saw daddy as a little brother. She said you could be scary but you would never harm me or let anyone else harm me. Anko smiled and said. You are right I will not harm you nor will I let anyone else harm you. It was then that Anko noticed for the first time the position of Rose. She beat herself up for not noticing that right away. Naruto answered the unasked question but the one he knew was going to be asked anyway. She woke up this morning and broke down crying hard for an hour. She then passed out. Anko said. Why what is wrong? Naruto said. Amber go and play please I will call you when we leave okay. Amber asked with a lot of concern on her face. Is Rose going to be okay? Naruto said. It will not be easy but she will be okay. She will need your help. Be there for her and let her know you are her friend. A simple hug can help out a lot in this case. Amber hugged her father and went to play in her room. Naruto said. I suspect that she is scared plan and simple. Anko said. I never noticed her being scared before. Naruto said. Then it means that Karenai made the right choice in allowing her to be a ninja. Anko was shocked by that and she let it be known in her voice. She allowed her daughter to be a ninja. Naruto said. Yes she even asked me to teach Rose. Anko said. Wow times have changed but you are right if she can hide her feelings so well then she will make a great ninja. Now on to the point why is she scared? Also why have you not put her down on a bed? Naruto said. I have not put her on a bed since when she wakes up she will be more scared if she is not near someone. What are all children of single parents that happen to be ninjas afraid of? Anko thought about it before saying. She is afraid Karenai will not come back alive. The two heard a voice say with a lot of sadness laced into. I am afraid I will be alone if mommy dies. Naruto said. You will never be alone. Your mommy made me your guardian should she die. I promise you if that happens I will adopt you and take care of you. He took a pause and pulled the younger girl into a hug before saying. You mom is one of the strongest I know. She will not die that easily. Rose said. Okay at least I won't be alone. I am still scared, Naruto said. It is okay to be scared. Rose said. I thought a ninja could not show fear or emotions. Naruto said. Yes you are correct about that point. However that is on the battlefield. He had to take a pause to figure out how best to explain this. He said. At home and with friends it is okay to show fear and emotions. If you bury them then you will end up nothing more than a weapon. Naruto had called Amber down and she climbed onto his lap and cuddled with her father. He said. There is a guy the first no. His name is Sai. He used to not have any emotions at all. Everything he did was fake. After a while he started to show emotions but until he did he was not well at all. He did not fit in. He told me that he did not feel like he was a person. He felt like a sword. Naruto took a pause before saying. So the bottom line is show emotions do not bury them. At times as a ninja we have to harden our hearts but they should not stay hardened or else we will not be human. I know that is a lot to take in. If you two still wish to be ninjas I will start to train you. The two little girls ran upstairs to Amber's room. Naruto went to check on them ten minutes later and the two were asleep. Anko the whole time was shocked at what she heard out of Naruto's mouth. She did not know he was that deep. Anko said. Naruto I will admit I had my doubts about you being a good father. However they are all dead now. You are an amazing person and will make an even better father. Amber is lucky to have you as her father. Naruto smiled a true smile one he had not had since the wedding. He said. No I am lucky to have her as a daughter. I sense there is something else you want to ask so what is it? Anko said. I was with Karenai yesterday when we heard what you said. She then went looking for you. So how did it go? Naruto then told Anko what had happened and all that he felt. Anko smiled and said. I am happy for you. She is the right one for you. Just don't hurt her. Naruto said. I would never hurt her I care about her too much. She called herself my girlfriend. I will never hurt my girlfriend. I am not saying I won't do something stupid. I am a guy after all. Anko hugged him and said. She will not do what the white-eyed bitch did. Give Karenai a chance and you both will be happy. 
Naruto said. I know I look forward to our date. Anko said. If you need someone to watch Amber I am all for it. Anko said. I don't want to ruin the happy moment. How come you have not talked with Sasuke much? Naruto said. Once a thief always a thief. I don't trust him at all. If he hurts my sister I will rip his eyes out. If he hurts my daughter I will let the foxes rip him apart. Anko said. So I was right you really don't want him around. Naruto said. I should have guessed you would have seen through my mask. My so-called friends did not. It gets me mad. After all he did and all the people he hurt and killed he got off without even a slap on wrist. He took a pause to control his anger before saying. If anyone else did that they would be put to death. If I even thought about leaving this village the hunter ninja would be sent after me before I could make it to the gate. Anko said. If it makes you feel better Karen I saw through the mask as well. I think on some level Amber sees through it as well. Naruto says. Why is it after all the good I have done I still feel like I am struggling to have just a small piece of happiness? Is it so wrong for me to want to be happy? Anko asked. What about Sakura? Naruto said. She is too loyal to Sasuke. I don't trust her or him. Anko said. Well you got me, Uruka, your grandmother and Karenai on your side plus all your friends and allies out of the village. Naruto said. It is wrong that all my friends are outside the village. Oh well. The girls are still asleep. I am going to let them sleep for now and I will start training tomorrow. Anko said. What are you going to teach them? Naruto answered. I am not going to teach them how to draw Charka right now. I will teach them more of the physical stuff. I am aiming mostly right now to get them stronger and able to do it. I want them to be kids for now. Anko did not ask but she knew that Naruto wanted his daughter to have the childhood he never had. That was why he got her the toys. He never had any toys growing up. He vowed his daughter would not have that. Meanwhile in the forest on the way to her mission Karenai had stopped for the night. I said. I did not say this before but I think it is best to say it now. The small fox grew to the size of a large horse and got right in Karenai's face before saying. If you hurt him in any way shape or form then we will feast on your flesh. Karenai was a little shaken up by that. Okay she was very much shaken up by that. She said after her heartbeat had returned to normal. I will not hurt him. I care about him too much. I have not known him long but I feel like there is a connection with him. I think I may be in love with him. I said. I know you will not hurt him. It is my job as his sister to be protective. You thought Anko and I are scary. Don't piss off Midnight. When she is mad even the nine-tailed fox is scared. Now let's get this mission done. Thanks for watching guys. Hope you all are enjoyed this video. If you do please leave a like share and subscribe also don't forget to support author of this fanfic. So let's end this video here. Until then see you in next video.